Good evening, folks. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy on the start of the week session in the Forex Trading Room for May 24th of 2020. As usual, we will go through our standard agenda, <clears throat> a look at the prior week's results, our currency strength meter for the past week and the past month, the calendar of events scheduled for this week, a look at the pairs on the daily charts, any setups we see in progress, and a few words in conclusion. With our ledgers, and let me start up front by saying that this was a decidedly sideways flat week, so not much movement in the uh, accounts. Uh, the long-term account had a slight uptick as one trade, the uh, Kiwi dollar, closed in our favor. So we're up about 2.5%, give or take. Again, nothing to write home about, but just a little bit of an uptick on the interesting story but in the opposite direction we did take a small loss in the neighborhood of two percent again uh, perfectly normal for a sideways week and the short-term account also suffered a very small sideways uh, loss of about one percent so again in the overall balances that we had on the accounts no significant change for the past week as the market didn't do much of anything. Um, we did, uh, of course, take steps to switch our trading model into the one that would work best for the sideways market. So that's what we did a couple of weeks back and it does seem to uh, be working out. Obviously in the sideways market, we're not gonna be making a ton of profit, but we're gonna be hanging on. And eventually when we see market breakouts, these will presumably take us into the bigger profits that we're usually looking for. So again, that is what we're doing right now, making sure we don't get too hammered by sideways action, but allowing ourselves to continue to be exposed to the bigger movements if and when they happen. Notes and opportunities for improvement. As I mentioned already, a very flat sideways market, and I already said this, but our change in methodology to adjust for this is working very nicely. The economies around the globe are starting to reopen after the uh, coronavirus, after the pandemic, but there is a significant fear that doing so is going to spark a second wave of infection. So it's been going back and forth. There's still a lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of fear, a lot of panic. There's a lot of uh, fear mongering coming out of the media as well. Take that as you will, depending which way you lean politically, but that's the way I see it. Oil is continuing to recover nicely. We'll see that when we look at the charts and silver as well. Silver is having a very nice bullish run right now. We can't stress enough that the coming months are going to provide opportunities that have not been seen since 2008. Either we're gonna have an even bigger collapse or we're going to start seeing a recovery. Either way, it's going to be a very, very nice trading environment. And of course, our live event, we're still planning on having that here in Pennsylvania. At this point, uh, we think we're gonna schedule it mid to late fall. So somewhere around December, October timeframe when the weather is still decent, it's gonna be getting a little bit cooler. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad. And again, we're waiting to see when and how Pennsylvania reopens fully. I need to then consult with the uh, hotel where we're going to be hosting the event, make sure they're ready for it, stuff like that. So as soon as I have an idea of a date, I will, uh, of course, inform everybody here and in our other venues. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Our relative strength meter for the past 30 and seven days. So on the uh, monthly, we can see that silver, that solid blue column towards the right, silver was the big mover for the past uh, month. Indeed, most of the 14.62% change is due to silver. You can see that there is no dark color on this chart. Everything is very pale except 
when it comes to silver. So that was the big mover. Otherwise, we're looking at a more or less sideways market. When we shift towards the uh, weekly, we can see that silver is still the big mover uh, for the week, followed very closely by the Kiwi, um, the New Zealand dollar. So that was another big mover. And the third one would have been the Australian dollar. So we see the silver, Kiwi and Aussie are the movers for the week uh, in a positive fashion. The big loser was the Japanese yen and gold. Gold went down last week. Again, we're not seeing a big move. You can see that volatility is uh, a little bit under 4% with the majority of it uh, still being on silver, uh, followed by uh, the Kiwi dollar. Um, almost a 4% level as well. The Aussie didn't get that far. You can see it's a much lighter blue and everything else is colored very, uh, very pale. Um, the Canadian uh, did well for the week overall, except against the Aussie and the Kiwi. The Swiss was um, middle of the pack, tending to, um, to bearish. It did poorly against everybody except the dollar and the yen. The euro also middle of the pack, pound middle of the pack. Uh, the dollar was weaker than otherwise, and that's about all you can say for the week. Again, no deep movements, just a lot of sideways action with only a couple of winners in the uh, currencies being the Kiwi and the Aussie. Fundamental announcements for this coming week, a very light calendar. We actually don't have any special trading sessions scheduled. So we've got a Bank of Canada governor's speech on uh, tom tomorrow, Monday, and tomorrow is technically a bank holiday, so uh, the trading activity promises to be light. Nothing again until Thursday where we have GDP and uh, durable goods orders out of the U.S. I don't trade those. And on Friday, we have GDP out of Canada, also something I do not trade. So we won't be having any fundamental trading this week. And with that, we move on to the charts. Starting with oil, we can see that the recovery continues quite nicely. It's pretty much uh, covering a level of resistance just about every week, every week and a half. So it came very close to the next level at the 36.33. Didn't quite get there as Friday ended. In fact, it tried to do a retrace on Friday but didn't manage that, ended up very near the top. So we continue to see strength in, um, in oil. In fact, uh, it's the very definition of a V-shaped recovery. You can see that going down all the way to the bottom and just as swiftly coming up. So it looks like we're gonna have some bullishness out of oil, which is always good for, well, my personal trading. For one, I trade options and futures, and uh, the oil is, um, is my oil trades are doing quite well. Uh, but also in the currency space, uh, the Canadian dollar, for one, is very sensitive to oil. So this is uh, propping, to some degree, the Canadian dollar from falling it even further. Moving on to the currencies, euro dollar, very sideways. It's a wide range of about 150 pips, give or take, uh, but it has been bouncing between that level of support and the level of resistance at the 110. And uh, it ended the week pretty much uh, a little bit higher than where it started, but not by much. We are still waiting for a decent breakout, but again, uh, in the situation we're in right now, the, uh, the currencies are, are all weakening to a degree, so it becomes a matter of which one weakens less. Uh, there's a little bit of flashes in the pan, primarily from the Kiwi uh, dollar, but again, nothing that would give us a good breakout or a good trend. So again, we're gonna be trading sideways. Uh, we're gonna be making the most of that and waiting for the next breakout. Uh, pound dollar is uh, more bearish than not. It's uh, reached a prior level of support, then bounced off of that and ended the week going down, but not as down as where it had started. So again, sideways, though a sideways pattern that is just beginning. USDJPY is uh, following a very shallow trend. It, it is going up, so we're seeing yen weakness against the dollar, but not to any significant degree. It is uh, pretty much hanging out, and I am waiting for that trend line break to go in short. That is my expectation. Of course, we won't be trading that until it actually happens. USD Canadian, 
perfectly sideways, bouncing between support and resistance. And again, we're waiting for um, an opportunity to trade it really in either direction. USD Swiss also sideways, but it is in a sort of narrow, narrowing wedge pattern. We can see that it's getting narrower and narrower as time goes by. So that is pretty much telling us that a breakout is, uh, is very likely, not necessarily this week, but in the very near future, we should see it break out of that pattern uh, one way or another. For now, we'll be, well, I'm willing to trade it in either direction, but it needs to start moving a little bit before that. Aussie dollar, and we covered this in the currency strength meter, the Aussie is gaining strength against pretty much everybody else out there. So you can see that playing out in this chart, another V-shaped recovery pattern. It did give us a higher high last week before bouncing off of that and hitting the new trend line. We'll have to see how this week begins. I'm very tempted in all of these, um, especially the ones that aren't truly sideways of setting up triggers to take us in in either direction. Um, but this one is a very, all the Aussie pairs are very likely candidates. Kiwi dollar showing uh, activity this week, but still you can see that it's much more sideways than the Aussie dollar. It had a really good week. It's had a good month. It's ending, it's ending the, um, the week on, on a high note, even though it retraced Thursday into Friday, but still it ended up much higher than it began and uh, was the key, the clear winner for the week. If it does break the next level of resistance, we're going to go in all guns blazing and try to trade it up. This, I, I should mention, was our, our profitable trade that took us out in the long-term account with a nice little bit of a boost, um, but I am looking to re-enter that trade. Aussie Canadian, and again, the Aussie is moving across all the, um, the different uh, currencies. No exception here. It did a breakout across the topmost level of resistance on the daily and is angling for the next level, not that far away from it. It tried, it didn't quite reach it, but it's still very bullish. We are long on this pair on two separate accounts and carrying profit as of uh, Friday's close. Have to wait and see if it does continue. That is my expectation that it will continue climbing. But of course, seeing is believing. So cautiously, we'll protect the gains as it moves, but I do think there is a lot of upside to this pair. Euro Swiss gave us a very, very sharp retracement at the beginning of the week, took us out of a uh, long running trade we had in the intermediate term account, and then went sideways for the remainder. So Tuesday into Friday, it didn't do much of anything. It tested resistance again, tested support, and pretty much where it ended on Monday. So net change other than Monday was, uh, was zero. I just... Uh, went sideways for the latter four days of the week. Still think this chart is uh, plainly bearish and will give us some good opportunities to trade down. But again, I want to see it moving before we get into it. Euro pound continued doing its retracement into pound weakness, but didn't really move much for the week. So the real activity was the prior week. Last week was uh, was really dull. It did end up higher than where it had started, but not by much. Tested resistance, couldn't quite break it. So this one may be ready to turn and start giving us some action towards the bottom. Euro JPY did also a very steep retracement. Uh, the first two days of the week, tried to continue on Wednesday and Thursday, failed and ended up retracing halfway back on Friday. So again, this one could go either way, but I am looking at more of a bearish pattern and trying to trade it down than anything else. Euro-Canadian, perfectly sideways and uninteresting, but as soon as it breaks out, it's probably going to be a great opportunity. Pound JPY, um, not much of a mover, went up Monday, Tuesday, and went slowly down Wednesday into Friday, ending up about halfway back to where it had started the week. So a bullish week, but not by much. Aussie JPY, again, it's an Aussie pair, so it is heading up. 
did very nicely Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and did a slight retracement Thursday into Friday. Still ended up keeping most of Monday's game, actually all of Monday's games, and then some. So um, it was still a very nice bullish week, and it is following a uh, outer trend line that I have drawn this week. You can see it there. It's been hugging that uh, trend line for about three weeks right now. And uh, again, I think there's a very good opportunity to trade it towards the top, towards the 75, 76 area. And we'll have to see if that pans out. Euro New Zealand is sideways, but a very wide range. So it is giving opportunities to trade in either direction. I have been placing pending orders on it to take us in. No matter which way it bounces, those will remain in place. Pound Canadian, sideways, uninteresting, but again, keep an eye on it because when it does give you a breakout, it's probably going to be spectacular. And Pound Swiss, same thing, very sideways, established a new trend line, a new outer trend line, but all in all, didn't move much throughout the week. That is the end of the chart. Set up Felici in progress. Uh, we've had this for more than a month now, maybe two months, but everything right now is coronavirus related. There is nothing else that matters at this point in time. That's starting to change. We're starting to see other things come to the fore, but as of right now, coronavirus is still the one factor you need to take into account. And that's it. Final words here, a few words in conclusion, as I always like to, um, to give you guys. And I repeat this one quite a lot, but it's worth repeating. We're not in this to predict. I, I get people asking me all the time, what's the Euro going to do this week? I have no clue. I really don't. Could go up, could go down. The only thing I can probably say is it's going to fluctuate. What trade are you entering right now? Well, I'm short on whatever. Two days later, they'll come back and say, hey, you said you were short on whatever and whatever went up. What's going on? What's wrong? No, I, I said I was shorting it. That doesn't mean that that's the only thing that was going to happen or that I was right. Uh, I did short it along with 10 other things I did. Some win, some lose. So again, if you're trying to get me to tell you the one thing that's going to make you money right now, it's not going to work. That's a prediction. This is not about predicting. No one can predict the market. So you don't know what's going to happen? Bingo. I have no clue what's going to happen. Trading isn't about predicting. No one can predict. So why do we do all this charting that I just spent the better part of 20 minutes doing well to identify the likely levels of support and resistance where price action is going to stall where price action once it crosses is very likely to keep going. That is what we are looking for, not to predict what the euro is going to do against the dollar. We are following whatever the market is doing. We're not anticipating it. And I have to repeat this lesson a lot because those questions uh, I just finished reading, I get those every single week uh, without fail. Somebody is asking me stuff like that. So again, they just don't get it, but I need to make sure that you guys get it so that you are successful traders. And that's it. That's going to be the end of uh, this uh, session. And uh, other than asking if anybody has any comments or questions before we drop off. Okay, then I will be sending. Hey, Andy, go ahead. Yes. How was the, how was the fishing? Absolutely terrible, man. I did not catch anything and I broke my rod. What were you going for? Ah, uh, either catfish, trout, or bass. I was at the Lehigh River. I had a lot of fun, man. You know, it's not about catching the fish. It's about being there and, uh, you know, throwing your line out and playing with it and all that. But uh, being, outside on, awesome. being outside on a beautiful day is what it's Oh, about. yes. It was absolutely gorgeous. So Excellent. I need to go buy a uh, new fishing rod and then go try again, man. But um, I, I guess my fishing rod hit my stop loss. <laughs> but thanks for asking man yeah. thanks for asking oh. Oh, yeah. All right, brother i'll talk to you soon have a good one guys and i will be sending a summary out very shortly tomorrow memorial day so it is a holiday in the u.s and a holiday in other places around the world so trading is going to be light since we don't trade in the afternoon on mondays anyway not a problem uh, we will be back at 8 p.m. tomorrow for a regular evening session. By that point, Japan is open 
for business anyway, so regular trading. Thanks a lot, guys, and catch you tomorrow. Take care.